We're going to turn now to Hillary Clinton. Her final appearance before the Senate as Secretary of State comes today when she introduces the man named to replace her, Senator John Kerry. And that comes just a day after her passionate and combative testimony about the terrorist attack in Benghazi that killed the U.S. ambassador and three other Americans. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, was there for all the action in Washington. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, George. It was truly a riveting day on Capitol Hill. We don't say that very often with Secretary Clinton, as some have never seen her before. She was at times combative, charming, disarming, and clearly ready for a fight. It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. But when Clinton spoke of her four fallen colleagues, the pain, the memories were still raw. I stood next to President Obama as the Marines carried those flag-draped caskets off the plane at Andrews. I put my arms around the mothers and fathers, the sisters and brothers, the sons and daughters. And Clinton did not hesitate to shoulder the blame. As I have said many times, I take responsibility. But that did little to quiet some Republicans who wanted to know how this could have happened. You let the consulate become a death trap. Had I been president at the time, I would have relieved you of your post. I think it's inexcusable. The secretary fought back, aggressively defending comments made by U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice five days after the attack. A very simple phone call to these individuals I think would have ascertained immediately that there was no protest. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? A strong defense that did not satisfy Senator John McCain. Why do we care? Because if the classified information had been included, it gives an entirely different version of events. Like McCain, there were some Republicans who Hillary Clinton did not convince, but this was certainly a memorable way to close out her tenure, George. And a memorable day today coming up, Martha, the ban on women in combat going to be formally lifted by Leon Panetta. It'll be a big part of his legacy, but it's also something that was being pushed hard by the military itself, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. True. It was actually the Joint Chiefs, the heads of the Army, Marine Corps, and other services. But what this really reflects is the reality of the last decade of war. Well more than 100 women have died in Iraq and Afghanistan, where the front line has blurred. But this does take it to a new level. They could be officially part of infantry units, perhaps special forces, if they meet the physical standards. And that means in the long run, many more women in top leadership positions in the military as well. That's exactly what that could mean. And there are a few soldiers who are worried about this, but change is always hard. Okay, Martha Raddatz, thanks very much.